Hello, welcome to the Minimalist CDC. My name is Chris, and today we're going to do a little disassembly and maintenance on this guy right here. This is the Quiet Care Drift. So, I just filmed the unboxing and first impressions. Uh, if you watch that, I, I was noticing that the, the clothes on it is a little tight. Um, I'm thinking that's just a little bit uh, lack of lubrication from the factory. So, what we're going to do is going to take this guy apart. We're going to add a little bit of KPL, we're going to get it running good. And put it back together so uh, I've never been in this knife before I don't know the internal workings of it but so we're gonna go on this journey together uh, one of the nice things about quiet carry uh, at least this model is everything's t8 so we only need one bit driver and so the first thing we're gonna do is get this pocket clip off okay and I can actually feel the um, there's a little plate on the other side right here that is, as I was working on it it was coming off as well so, all right, we got the pocket clip off. I'll set that over there. And it looks like this little guy wants to come out as well, so I'll put it with the pocket clip so that we all have light to light because I think all these are gonna come out as I take the screws out. All right, we're gonna get the other one of these out. It's giving me a little resistance. I don't think there's any Loctite in there. It may just be from the factory. Yeah, so. Uh, that one's staying in there, which is perfectly fine by me. So let's set that guy by himself. And then we will get the pivot out. Oh, it feels like a captured pivot. Fantastic. Love to see it. So there's the pivot. And that comes right off. Fantastic. So here's a neat thing. Um, we have these weight relief uh, sections where uh, it's it looks like the way that they've done this is to maintain balance so you have a, a big one here and three little ones here rather than just like one long channel that routes all this out uh, I'm a fan of that the the knife felt very balanced when I first opened it up and was handling it so I think that they did a a, a really fine job with keeping the balance in mind while they're also doing weight relief and so you also see your lock bar right here your lock bar insert and yeah I see that we're running on washers which makes a lot of sense with the kind of the purpose of this knife being a aquatic or dirty environment knife you don't really want your knife to be clogged up with um, dirt and grime in the washers so but nevertheless we're going to take this apart we're going to use a little bit of bargain basement rubbing alcohol to clean things up so all I'm going to do here is take the washers and use a little bit of rubbing alcohol to get them cleaned off perfect and then I'm going to get any gunk and grime from the factory right here and you see that we do have, indeed have a D-shaped ring, which is our captured pivot, and then more of this milling, which is like nickel dime quarter size that uh, pulled out uh, material here to make this thing incredibly light for what it is. And I don't think I really have to do anything else. Uh, I'm gonna just put put some KPL on there, and while I'm while I am lubing up this knife, if you could throw a like and subscribe, that would be lovely helps me grow the channel as of posting this I'm almost at 100 subscribers so I'd like to hit that milestone and then keep growing so we're gonna put that there and then our pivots gonna go back in first try proud of myself and just put a dab of oil here again I always over oil these things uh, the oil will come out in the first few flicks of the knife and then I just wipe it off the blade I'd rather have a little extra oil than not enough and so this is going to go back right here and then I'm going to put a little bit of oil on in the detent ball hole and then kind of drag it through the detent ball track and then a little bit of oil right here one thing I would like to see on on more knives is a detent ball ramp where it's basically a little cut in the uh, metal right here so the detent ball doesn't have to jump up onto the ramp it just kind of slides up but that's just a slight nitpick I would like to see more makers do that and then I put a little bit of oil on the washer 
All right, washer is done. Um, one thing that I want to call out and look at this guy. So we talked about the cutouts. Um, the cutout here, when they're doing a, a bolster lock or a frame lock, you, you have to basically do a cutout to ensure that it bends properly and pr provides that lock bar pressure. I'm gonna throw a huge shout out to companies that put that lock bar cutout on the inside of the scale rather than the outside of the scale. It just makes it look better in my opinion, where you don't have that divot and cutout on the on the backside. It's just a smooth, contiguous piece of metal. So small rant there, uh, big props to you know doing it this way and um, it just takes a little bit more effort and I think it's worth it. So we're gonna go back to putting this back together. We have the stop pin here on the back side, where it's going to go in into this stop pin hole, and perfect. Yep. Uh, I'm going to start by putting the pivot screw back in. I'm surprised this is very easy to maintain. I was expecting a little bit of complication, and I am getting no complication. So that's going to go back in. I'm not going to tighten it down too much just yet. All right. So next we are going to go with this screw right here. Get that guy in nice and tight. And then, so this little barrel is gonna go back into the scale and connect to the other side. If I can get it to slide in there. Maybe I spoke too soon. Oh, it is a D-shaped ring. So this one actually is shape dependent as well. So let's take a look at that. See how that has a D-shaped, a flat side? So it only goes in one way. All right. So we just need to figure out which way is the right way. And voila, there it goes in. Um, very cool that the maker decided to put a a d-shaped into those barrels as well that way you only have one way and I like putting things in the right way so I appreciate that um, it's mandatory to put it in the right way next we are going to put this guy in to secure our pocket clip so I'm getting a little resistance so I'm gonna back it out yep there we go. Make sure it don't. If you get any resistance on these screws, don't force it. Back it back out and then try it again. You don't definitely don't want to misthread them. So where do we got? Um, it's a little off center. Tighten it up a little bit. What do we got now? Oh yeah, it's centered. So put our oil away. Let's see what we got. Oh, that is that is very tight. That is not good. So let's back that off a little bit. I'm just gonna half turn. Okay, much better. Yeah. So side to side, got a little bit of side to side play. So I'm gonna do some of micro adjusting. There we go. Side to side's gone, front to back is non-existent. And I don't think this is ever gonna be a drop shotty blade. Like when you're dealing with washers, maybe when it breaks in after some time, we'll, we'll end up with that. But like, I just wanted a blade that I can finger close and like basically push the lock bar out of the way, close it with my finger. And that's what I currently have. So mission accomplished. The, the, the regular flick is good. Reverse flick is good, close, close is good, and we don't have play in the blade. So this has been Disassembly and Maintenance on the Quiet Carry Drift. I very much appreciate your time. Uh, I hope you have a great day, and I'd appreciate a like and subscribe. Y'all take care.